Mr. Rabbit here, time for another boring science explanation. This one is on a, the homework that you're doing on the worksheets that talk about factors that influence climate. Um, I'd like to remind you that you definitely want to look at page 14 of the Earth Science Reference Table, which is the planetary wind and pressure belt charts, along with page 4 of the Earth Science Reference Tables. Now, I'm not going to read this with you, but on the bottom, it's going to go through a sequence of factors that will describe what influences climate. What I like about this is it breaks it down into temperature and precipitation because climate is the average conditions of temperature and moisture for a region for an extended time period. Now, our mnemonic that we have sort of played with on this for climate factors and it's one of those things that you should use to help you is la poop, okay? Latitude, altitude, proximity to water, ocean currents, orographic effect, planetary wind and pressure belts. Okay, that's really most of the factors that they're going to describe. Um, and the way they're usually gonna ask about this is with something that's known as an imaginary continent group. So on the back of the sheet, you've got your typical imaginary continent. It's usually sort of an amoeba-shaped continent, sort of like a supercontinent like Pangaea that goes all the way from the southern hemisphere sort of back down to the northern hemisphere. Now, if I zoom out a little bit, we might be able to see a wider region um, they don't always give you as much information as they did on this one. Uh, they already drew in the planetary pressure belts. You'll notice the latitudes tend to be the latitudes that they give you. They give you 0, 30, 60, um, not usually 90. But the first thing I'd like you to do whenever you see a group like this is automatically flip to page 14. And on page 14, you've got the planetary wind and pressure belt chart, and this helps you to remember where rainforests and deserts are, your wet belts and dry belts alternate with high and low pressure. So the first thing I do before I even start looking at the questions is I would look at this. Okay, the equator is a low pressure belt. I could put an L there, but it's a low pressure belt and it's wet. 30 degrees north is high pressure, and that gives you dry air because the air is sinking. Okay, you've got another low pressure belt at 60 north, so low pressure belts are wet where the winds converge and the air rises. Now, if I finish the southern hemisphere, you're going to have dry conditions, deserts at 30 degrees south because it's a high pressure belt, and then the low pressure belts are at 0 and 60. Now the low pressure belts at 60 are not as wet as the low pressure belt at the equator. Warm wet air has significantly more moisture than cold wet air. Um, now cities, when they give you a mountain range, they'll usually give you cities on opposite sides. The factor that they're looking for here is the orographic effect with the windward and leeward sides. Over here, you've got two cities that are located on the same parallel of latitude. If you've got two cities on the same parallel, this typically is going to ask you about the difference in temperature range from coastal versus continental. Right? You've got A, which is in a high pressure belt. You've got E, which is in a low pressure belt. Looking at F, you see they put F at 30 south, but they also put it on the top of a mountain. So altitude is another important factor with climate. So I'd like to start looking through the questions. You could pause the tape. You can fast forward if you just can't find question number four, but please attempt to do all the questions prior to your actually, you know, watching the video. Use the video to, for help with your homework, not to do your homework. All right, so looking at the first sequence of questions. Number one says, what factor would cause location F 
to have a higher, have a colder yearly climate. Well, looking at F, okay, we've already looked at F. F was at 30 degrees south, relatively close to the equator, closer than us, but definitely being at the top of a mountain would make it cold. So for the first question, you might indicate something like this. F is located at the highest altitude. <clears throat> An altitude is an important climate factor. Since F is the highest altitude, it's going to have the lowest surface air temperatures. Temperature and altitude are indirectly related. So as air temperature increases, uh, yeah, sorry, as altitude increases, air temperature decreases. Okay, you can get snow covered mountains on the top of mountains at the equator. Okay, now, second question is asking you about location E. Location E has the highest yearly annual rainfall, and they're looking for three factors. So, looking at E, one thing that you notice is, is it is at zero. Okay, this map, we didn't write it, but from the reference table, you could put wet, low pressure belt, brings lots of precipitation because the air rises. Now, there's a mountain range there. You need to figure out windward and leeward based on the prevailing winds. And looking at this particular model, since you're talking about the trade winds here between 30 south and zero, the winds are blowing from east to west, so E would be on the windward side, which should, should be moist. Now, the planetary winds also determine the direction that the air masses move. This is a warm tropical ocean, so you would be getting maritime tropical air masses forming over the ocean, and then the planetary winds would be pushing that air onto the continent. So honestly, E would be one of the wettest possible, you know, positions that you could consider. So if we look at this, the three things that we just said, it's located in a low pressure belt, it's at the equator, ITZC is the intertropical convergence zone, that's another name for the low pressure belt at the equator, it's on the windward side, and the prevailing winds the weather systems would tend to track from the ocean onto the land, which should bring, you know, more moisture to it. Now, C or D, which one would have a greater annual rainfall? The answer we wrote here is D. Looking at the map, these seem to be around the latitudes um, that you would get in the continental U.S., but D is definitely on the windward and C is on the leeward. So because the prevailing winds, you always have to look at the prevailing winds for windward and leeward. The prevailing winds are from the west, or the prevailing westerlies. D would be on the windward, where rising air expands and cools. C would be on the leeward, where it should be hot and dry. So for question three, okay. I wrote something like this. Yours does not have to be this is extensive, but this goes through everything. Windward and leeward, they call that the orographic effect. So when you're looking at three, the orographic effect will change the precipitation values. Windward side is cool and moist, while C is on the leeward. What's the leeward like? The leeward side is hot and dry. Another phrase or another term they might use there is arid. Now, 4 is discussing points A and B. So when we look back at the map, point A and B are two cities located at the same parallel of latitude. They happen to be at 30 degrees north. Okay, it's a high pressure belt. It's going to be dry there. But with this one, A is at definitely an inland location they might call it inland or continental. Okay, when you look at an inland or continental area, it heats much more rapidly. OK, 
okay? It's land has a low specific heat. Now B is definitely coastal. The word that they use is it's going to be moderated by the oceans, okay? The temperature values are not so extreme. So when we look at what I wrote, as I said, yours probably wasn't all of this, but hopefully you caught, caught points of this. All right, proximity of water, you know, how close it is to the ocean will change the temperature ranges. Okay, location A is continental, so it's got a higher temperature range. On the graph that I sketched here, if you get hotter summer and colder winters, that would be A. That would definitely be an inland or a continental region because land heats and cools faster. Now, when you look at B, B would be the curve that shows less variation. The climate is moderated. Summers are cooler and winters are warmer. So that's, you know, what we experience and it's also a nicer climate. Now, number five. A is located near the center of a large desert. What factor would account for its low annual precipitation? Well, we said you always look at the reference tables. Right at 30 degrees north, it says dry. On the reference tables, when you look at 30 degrees north, not only does it say dry, you see that the air is descending and sinking air compresses and warms. So you get deserts mostly at 30 north and 30 south. To describe that, location A is at a high pressure belt. Uh, in high pressure, the air sinks. You remember sinking air compresses and warms. You have clear skies and very little chance of precipitation. Now, final question was three factors that could cause climate D to be cooler than climate B. So we're looking at B and D. B is located at 30 degrees north. D is maybe 45. Okay, so obviously one difference is the latitude. D is at a higher latitude, it should be colder. D is on the windward side of the mountain. On the windward side, rising air expands and cools, so it's co usually cool and moist on the windward side. Okay. Another factor that you can look at is you've got the wind directions. Okay, This is a high pressure belt where the air is sinking. Here you've got air moving off the ocean onto the continent. And the last thing that might even be a factor here is ocean currents. When you look at ocean currents, I can't give you a map of what the ocean currents look like here, but the general rule is usually on the east coast, you tend to get warm currents, bringing warmer water and probably wetter conditions. And the west coast of many continents is where the cold currents are, and cold currents drop the temperature and usually make it a little bit drier. So for that final question, I identified four. It asked you for three. I probably wanted D is at a higher latitude, less insulation, D, is on the, ooh, this is a big mistake. D is on the windward side, not the leeward side of the mountain range. And on the windward side, rising air expands and cools. Location D is coastal, where the prevailing winds bring air onto the continent. And B is at high pressure belt, where the air sinks. Okay, sinking air is definitely gonna be warmer. Finally, the ocean currents may differ. So the ocean currents on the east coast tend to be warm, but west coast on many of the continents you'll see they are cool. I hope that helped you to get a better understanding and to, you know, just hear the reasoning for this imaginary continent group. Good luck.